Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the Group E second round match between Pybot and his Lizard Men and Strider 84 and his Wood Elves. As you can see, they are both bright yellow. So let's switch this straight out to red and blue. Strider with red Wood Elves, Pybot with blue Lizard Men. Um, I can show you the group table here. Oh my god, no, I can't because they're about to kick off. No, they're not. Here's a group table. Both the Wood Elves have beaten the All World Alliance and the Lizards. Pybot has already lost to Misspell Tree in round one. So he is eliminated if he loses this game. If it's a draw, then um, it's not too bad. Can hope for other things going his way. But um, at this point in time, a lot, you know, two losses is definitely out of the competition 100% um, so it's a high kick here like you, you you know you can put a catcher under for catch but realistically you want the ball and a dancer so you just put the you just put the dancer under and he catches it and so I can tell you how these guys qualified like I don't already know, but Strider is Swiss and qualified on the Champions Cup Season 3 official playoffs, PC. And Pybot is, of course, Irish and qualified via the ERA BB3 League. And what happened there? That was Dub Skulls, was it? I was not watching. I just imagined blocks. A Dub Skull. Did not re-roll, and now, is this where all these players want it to be? I don't know. Maybe? Um, so Pybot's got six blocks, completely normal team. And honestly, this um, Strider's team is probably the absolute... Oh, so, so what... Pybot has he he only has eleven players. He's got three rerolls. I feel like maybe twelve players and two rerolls is more standard, but it's still a completely standard build. Um, Strider has gone with a strip ball dancer, a sidestep dancer. I really like the sidestep dancer actually. Three dice here with block. And we're stunned, and the completely standard two dodge, two wrestle lineman tree man and the leader thrower so yeah i think this is the absolute typical wood elf build you would expect here from strider strider is kind of the defending champion right uh, the tournament we had in january was just the season two finals it wasn't the first world championship it was the season two finals but it's like the spiritual uh first one isn't it so Two losses isn't technically death. It surely is. It is. Two losses is, is death. It's definitely death. Two losses is definitely a maid. God, of course. I'm a fool. Because, yeah, you can have the three-way tie with two wins. So of course, you can have a three-way tie with two losses. God damn it, Jay Leave. God damn it, why do you have to be right? So there we go. Um, <laughs> basically, death if he loses. <laughs> God damn, clever Jay Leave. Right. So I, I quite like this, right? You know, lots of pressure. I mean... He's not. He hasn't put this guy on there, but that's okay because it's you know he's got dodge, who so probably makes it. But you know, a fair amount of pressure. It's good. This guy's totally trapped. Really tough ask 
from Pivot here. But this is a good start, isn't it? Three players on the Crocs is nice. Let's see, no knockdown. Don't think we'll risk a dodge without dodge, and that's why. Instant one. So yeah, obviously he felt that was important enough that he did that before the 1 in 9 dodges. Because that was technically a 1 in 36, right? He could make it a 1 in 36. So he valued that the reroll usage over the... Uh, the more likely to get there without using a reroll, but less likely overall of the dancer and the lineman. Oh god, he just gets the four plus dodge off. Nice Croxago, mate. Where'd you get it? So, lots of options for Pivot here, none of them good. <laughs> it's basically a wild goose chase, isn't it? You've just got to keep chasing after them. I think the best way is to just continuously base and hope you don't make a mistake glorious. and let no, them through for free, right? In until I'm victorious and it's I will really defend. Hard. I will defend. My name is Lapin. Thank you very much. Welcome to Team Fantastic. Oh yeah. I, I think this is so difficult. Um, but yeah, it, it surely just blitz things. Blitz and base, right? I don't think you can try and play off and scream. I think you have to, you have to aggressively base and try to eliminate. I didn't hate going for this guy, but going for this guy would have got your Saurus off the tree, which is quite nice. Don't want the tree smashing bits. And then you could try and stay in between the tree. So you don't want him reconnecting to the tree and using the tree as a cage. The problem is, by chasing like this, is getting players behind the ball. Which also you don't really want, so I think like one square in would have been a little bit better for this Saurus. Yeah, there you go. PC. It's it's hard though, isn't it? It's so hard. Is the problem. And, you know, he does have two players on the tail. Gonna dodge the other skink and then two dice this wrestler. He's got a second skink on the tree. But by standing this guy up, he's... Uh He's, you know, he's counting the tree assist so he can just dodge away and two dice this lad. Let's this guy stand up for free and this guy, you know, maybe maybe the skink could have stayed there. It's hard. It's really hard though. Oh, I don't like that. I would have I would have put him at the top, so if you power him, you've trapped him, right? I'd put him on the top so you're trapping him if you pow. Like, yes, it's a bit greedy, like playing for the 55% knockdown, but I don't want him to just two plus away next turn. And, of course, Pybot just stunned him, so that stops him two plusing away. But yeah, I really like basing this down guy just because he hasn't got dodge, right? So if he stands up and kind of threatens your skink, well, you can bring these guys through and, you know, block him down maybe. Um, I feel like, you know, you don't... And like, this guy's actually getting smashed by a block. Whereas he wouldn't have been if he was up there. Only stunned.
Just got to hope that uh, Strider makes, you know, a critical 1 in 36 fail is the big hope for Pybot. Not yet. Massive pow. Does the block before the dodge? Interesting. You know, like the block, the dodge is another three percent fail. So you know, if you're going to make the block anyway, and I guess you're not too bothered about getting punched by the Saurus on the one in nine fail, it's all right. So there we go. All the dice rolls passed by Strider. Absolutely easy. And with like a layered screen, so he can't easily get the crocs. Probably can't at all get the crocs on the ball. Now, now this is turned into like kind of a dacker, right? So now do you blitz this guy and try and go, get wide? You probably got to try and get wide again here, right? You're very narrow. If you, you you can't really can't blitz anybody except this guy, I think. And he's got wrestle, which is annoying, isn't it? Maybe you could try and blitz the catcher and squeak sneak through here. Difficult, tricky. Everything's tricky as the lizards. Wood elves are so annoying, honestly. They've got so much dodge. It's kind of ridiculous. Just hoping their dice aren't good. Really doesn't want to fail anything here, right? Because he really wants to get this Saurus dodge off. So yeah, he goes for the three dice on the catcher. Doesn't get the knockdown, but maybe can get a bit of width. Massive uh, Crocs roll. Makes it. But doesn't doesn't get the width with the crocs. I think probably the play with the crocs was just to get him out here, right? Even though it kind of like looks stupid, not using his tail. I feel like holding this area was pretty important because Strider's is going to go here, right? Strider's is just going to go here. Doesn't try to dodge away from the tree. Might even sideline cage here, right? Because he's got sidestep. Gives you an extra, like, maybe even two squares, right? Because if you stand there and you get powered, you can go in the crowd. But with sidestep, you can just stand directly on the sideline. So you, you could just go right for forward and hook the sideline if he wants. Doesn't have to, but he could. Safe moves first. Outrageous. Yeah, that is that. I found that confusing as well, too, I believe. I don't, I don't think I mentioned it, but I was also bamboozled. I mean, so there is there is tail on these two, so they are one in nine dodges. But I mean, you can see that the, you know, this is exactly where Strider went, and if the Crocs, where was it here? One, two, three, four, five, six. It wouldn't have been actually that far out, but. Would have made things a little bit more difficult though, having a having that width.
No, I mean, I, I, I don't know. No, maybe he had an idea, but I didn't know what it was. Well, there you go. So there we go. The, the tail being where it was, though, did get that turnover, which does get um, Pi but two blocks. And uh, maybe something good. And pill on the ball. Uh, yeah, tail on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, tail on the ball. That is something that people like. It's pretty difficult for woodies to get rid of it, right? He might roll a one, yeah. I like I like the rush to get him up there actually. Like you can't be completely scared of just rolling dice, right? Gets a removal. I feel like using the skinks to like restrict the movement of the wood elves is good. So like for example, this guy getting a two plus out. You, if you put a skink around there, he can't get a two plus out. Right? Whereas like using a source for that is terrible, isn't it? So that's what the skink could be doing. But the problem is like that's so far behind the ball. I think you've got to get things back. But. If you did want to pin these, like that's what you want to use the skinks for, right? You want to use the skinks for like putting one there and putting one there and trapping these guys. But you probably don't want to trap them now, you want to get them back to relevancy. Pybot going into his time bank. Already a minute deep. The leap away. I mean, I just want them back so anywhere, really. Like, I understand the temptation to, like, you know, base this guy so he's got to dodge and stuff, or whatever, but... Yeah, and obviously punch him. Doesn't get the knockdown. Or does. <laughs> it could take the board down. Could just dodge this one, couldn't he? It's re it's pretty good to have a skink here, like stopping him two plus and away. It's really good to have a skink there, but like mega mega good. Okay, well, in contact is also kind of fine. Problem is now you might if you ever, if everything else works for him, he'll just punch you. <laughs> <laughs> I th I think while this guy down here is all right, I think he should have been here to stop getting the assist in from that square. So I I think this Saurus should have been two squares up. This skink one square up. I'll try and go a bit, a bit behind. I went a bit as it was happening there, didn't I? I'll try and go a bit behind. So yeah, this is the way to get the 2D right with that assist. That was that was why I think this source had to be there. Oh my god, he's dub scold. Ooh, he was a one in nine away from disaster. That's why I think he had to have the source here because that, that's how to get the two dice on it. And it like it's pretty easy, right? One in thirty six. Two one in thirty sixes to get two dice.
the classic sideline sidestep. Now the Crocs is completely out of the game, stranded on a lineman. Gonna say, does he have to move the tree? And uh, well, yes, halflings versus doors is pretty miserable. Yeah, makes the three plus dodge without dodge outrageous, and then just one d's that skin. Well, we can probably, with a bunch of dice, two dice, the dancer, right? But <laughs> you could even roll loads of dice, loads and loads and loads of dice, skink fill all these three squares, and then six plus in with a Saurus. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That might be the best play, as stupid as that is. <laughs> that literally might be the best play, because that's how bad things are right now. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he will do it. There is a space through here, right? There's a three gap here, so you can get you can get players up and through and doing something. But okay, you just got to keep hoping for one in thirty sixes from. Strider. <laughs> yes, exactly, Charlie. Exactly. Then that might be the best play. Like that isn't that ridiculous that that might be the that might be the best play. Oh, I thought you. So I thought what the more realistic best play was was that Saurus blitzing the dancer to the sideline, and then this guy just coming back round to there. Right, that's what I thought he'd do, and what a normal person would do. But um, you gotta like play here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Follow. And then one, two, three, four, five, up to there. That's what I thought would have happened. Because, you know, filling all the squares for a surf is ludicrous. Probably has to rush here, right? But then you can get surfed. So rushing looks rubbish. Crocs dodge. One, two, three, four. Six. <laughs> Again, that's he could have also Crocs dodged, right? If he'd done that blitz. And put him on the sideline and put him there. He could have also like crocs dodged and double rush. Like all these options look sound ludicrous, right? I get that. But if the reality of the situation is you are in the middle of a disaster, then um these ludicrous solutions don't seem so bad, do they? Nice one D. Guess you just want him back. And last action croc dodge. Against the rooted tree. Rolled a one, so he would have uh, absolutely gone stupid if he was the crocs. Crocs might might as well have activated, honestly, just try and get lucky with the power because you're not doing a whole lot there as the crocs are here. <laughs> Crocodile shoes. <laughs> Do you know what's terrible, Steve? I wish I could sing as well as Jimmy Neal. 
<laughs> That's not good, is it? That's not something anybody should hope for. And yet, here I am, a worse singer than Jimmy now. Okay, first thing he does is just run straight to the end zone and impede it. I think, honestly, I think he had to blitz this dancer. Blitz this dancer and stick that other guy there. Stick this guy there. Like, that's, that's an actual reasonable problem for him. Could have also re-rolled the hit on this dancer, right? Look for a pow. And genuinely could have could have gone for a crox dodge. Double rush, like it's just so hard, it's so desperate, it's so bad. Like not necessarily the matchup, but just the way you know, the way the board came out, right? Like he had a pretty decent turn. Uh, he had a couple of turns pie bot where, you know, Strider was making some critical rolls. Things could have worked out well for him. Well there's the there's the re roll gone stride out of rerolls but only two turns left and uh yeah he absolutely had to reroll that didn't he i mean he is disconnected from everybody maybe maybe piebot will get a two turn chance here maybe maybe this is good enough Yeah, that, that, that dub skull is going to make this next turn hard. So there you go, maybe a... Oh, no, here we go. Rolling dice. Doesn't pop dodge yet. Take all there. Nope. It's got a three two out this way. Maybe he doesn't take it. No, nope, he does. Well, there we go. Rolled some dice. Now it looks pretty, pretty horrible again. Yes, Lepeg, yep. <laughs> yep. And this is the point where having plus one movement on every single player compared to Dark Elves is pretty strong, isn't it? Yeah, back to a disaster, yeah. But the lack of re-rolls, you know, means there's a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. Gets a knockdown. Yeah. Yeah, he can still he can still get things back. He can still get lots of players back. Put tail on two guys. You know. Run things through. Hope for the best. There's a chance. The lack of re-rolls. Is good. I wonder if. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rush, rush, right? But then. Not really, because you'd rather keep your reroll for the, the two turn if you get it, but then... It's one of those things, it's always just so difficult, isn't it? Like this is basically not doing anything, right? Whereas if you'd rush, rushed, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, rush, then all of a sudden, and then skink in there, then this guy can't move. But now it's just a two plus. I 
but then it's hard because obviously you don't want to use two rerolls and then and then he goes in and now you've only got one reroll for your two turn but like this this skink to there is incredible right okay well it didn't go there but I really love the skink in there and then these guys and then the crocs in the back and the skink there and then they can't get out and then if this guy had double rushed it would, th this skink was trapping the dancer and these two linemen would have been incredible Oh my god, he's down at two minutes of, uh, two minutes of time. Now, ah, so he rushes to put a source there. He's making the rushes now. But, I mean, look how much better it is if this source is there, right? Like, it's just literally so much better. Oh, wow, puts the, puts the crocs there. Interesting. I mean, this is a pretty critical turn, to be fair. Like, this is, this is a, this is a turn to use lots of time on because you really, really, really want to get a two turn chance, don't you? You really want him to not be able to stall this. Actually, the crocs there is pretty nice, isn't it? Because now he hasn't got dodge, and it's a 3+, plus, so he's taken this out. And these guys probably weren't doing a lot anyway. So I really like basing this guy here. With no rerolls, yeah, it's just dodge. He rolled a 1 as well. Yeah. So there we go. Well done, Pybot. I mean, Strider scored, but congratulations, Pybot. Now he's got a two turn chance. He's got all three re rolls up against 10 players. He's got half a chance. Problem is, boy howdy, is he going to have to play faster in the second half? Also, this was defense, which is kind of easier. <laughs> now he's got offense, where he's got to like, come up with plans to stop getting stripped, which he didn't have against Miss Tree. And now he's got, to, he's got to do that with basically no time bank. So this is going to get pretty brutal for him, I think. <laughs> this isn't looking uh, great for Strider as he struggles to defend with 10 players <laughs> Strider just casually digging into his time bank with no idea how to defend with 10 players. Pretty funny, isn't it? <laughs> I 
I mean, you just have to blitz this guy, right, and turn around, turn the corner. Like it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool defense to be fair, but like surely it splits this guy and turn the corner. If you blitz this guy, you've got a power him, or this guy, you've got a power him. So surely, like I know the strip is there. It doesn't really matter where the strip is; he can reach you wherever he is. I wasn't the defense wasn't easy. It's was just funny how long he took, wasn't it? <laughs> Moving everything around forever. <laughs> just looked funny sure I, I think for sure I mean well, I shouldn't say it before he's done it but for, for sure for me I'm blitzing this guy and just pushing up this is absolutely necessitates a power on the catcher or the, or the wrestler doesn't it I guess you get the three dice the catcher. You can put a skink in there and then base there and then blitz there. So you do get the three dice it. So you're pretty likely. No, because both down isn't good enough. No, no. It's... Oh no, you can just go, you can go there. I was thinking you had bits from that direction. You don't do it because you have to power anyway. So you can just assist and then blitz. No, because uh, ball down isn't good enough. You have to power him. You have to power. I don't think it matters how far he is. He's movement eight. <laughs> I really don't. Th this side is close to the stripper. Like they, they go anywhere, don't they? So I think getting guaranteed into range is worth more than not being in range. Tudor, you have to power him though. I, you can't. Pushing is not fine. In what way is pushing fine? Pushing is nowhere near fine. That's why I'd go this way. I would I would go this way a million percent. He got a timeout. Ooh. But again, him the lineman is is worse than going this way. Like I just don't get why you go this way. This way is so much better. But the timeout is very interesting, isn't it? Unfortunately for Pi, but that means Strider might end up two nil up. But now that he's got a bit more, a few more turns, now he can just switch around, you know, and play more conventional offense for three turns. Problem that Pybot has is he has to play like so much faster, dude. How much time are you spending to make two blocks? <laughs> He's a minute in to make two blocks. Pybot has got to play so much faster. So much faster. Like, literally so much faster than this. This is unacceptable. He's got a whole offensive drive to do of eight turns. He's going to use all of his time bank in the first half. He's literally going to use all of his time bank in the first half. He might even run out of time this turn. This is uh, this is not good. This is really, really, really not good. Really not good. Like this is like the easiest turn you're going to get for the rest of the match, <laughs> right? This is literally the easiest turn you have for the rest of the match. And you are dipping into your time bank on it. Yeah, this is this is bad. This is real bad for Pybot. Oh god. Stupid stupid crocs. 
Oh no, this is horrible. Doing a rush to hit. That's a pow. Gets a Kaz. Lovely hit on the uh, leader. And also a not good cage. Fails the pick up. Okay. Wow. The timer bug is bad, but he used a minute of his time bank on a block two guys and blitz somebody and pick up the ball turn. That is, whew, he needs to like slap himself in the face, pour some water over his head. He's got to do something to like get in the game because you cannot keep playing this slow. You just cannot keep playing this like you've got to get so much faster so quickly yeah the pickup feels probably better for him yeah probably better than just getting instantly stripped Great Kaz, though, for um, Pybot. Okay, well, he's in a bit of a pickle. Well, are looking instant now. Look at this. I like this a lot more. Let's go, Piper. Instant blitz. He knows what he's doing. He's got a plan, and he's going for it. Okay, it stole a little bit, but that was good. The plan it probably involves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've blocked your path. Eight. Rush, rush. Let's go. Do it fast. Fast. Fast Pybot, fast. Roll all your dices, get your men forward, let's flip and go. Okay. No oh man, it's, it's flashbacks to her. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's flashbacks to Martin Cruel, isn't it? Makes the pick up, makes the rushes. This was the only place he could go. Because he, he blocked, I think it would be better to push to there and then come through there, but it's just like loads of rushes and stuff now, like millions and millions of rushes and just make as much of a cage as you can. But do it fast. Please. Please pie but do it fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny as well because if he pushed that to that square, then he would have been <laughs> funny, eh? Okay, here we go. This is some fine dice rolling. Oh 
god, 20 seconds left. No, baby not. There's enough time. There is, like, this is good, isn't it? This is good. I think this is way better that this is a thing than it not being a thing. To be honest. I don't want people to sit there four minutes every turn. Taken forever. Yeah, this is... This is great, isn't it? It's like, well, here we go. Things are happening. Yes, yeah, the end of turn thing is not good, yeah. yeah. They could have fixed that bug before the World Cup. That would have been that would have been a good play. Is he just going to base the ball or is he? I think he's going for the strip. Which is a 30% to fail the rushes. And the leap is 34% of fails. This is very unlikely. Makes them all. <laughs> but again, Pivot could have been out of range if he had made that initial blitz. If he'd pushed him to this square, he could have gone through there and he could have been out of range. Yeah, he was like less than 50 50 to, to get the hit, wasn't he? But he got it. And now it's. Uh, Yeah, like there should be something that tells you you've triggered your time bank, right? Like you, sh you should have something there. Otherwise, you could just not know that you're in your time bank. And, you know, like that's worse, right? Like the way the pe you know, kind of like how the people who can't feel pain just like accidentally like burn half their face off and stuff. Like <laughs> it's that kind of idea, right? You don't want to just like accidentally run out all of your time bank. But um, yes, it could be something that happens once or whatever and then that's okay right. so can I get another scatter I guess it's... oh no we can pow and chain it off <gasps> glorious and a Kaz as well! <laughs> oh my goodness! He's Kaz the Stripper. That makes his offense a million times better. And then he can punch this one. And then dodge, pick it up and rush. Oh my god, Pybot's going to win. Okay, calm down everybody. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> but this is... He can actually just double rush, right? Yes, he's done the right thing. He doesn't make the dodge. He double rushes. Reroll, tripwire, he gets in! So, I've got nothing against Ryder, of course. Lovely, lovely fella. Plays in Super League. Um, but, you know, little bit biased for Error BB. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Lizards are kind of the underdog in this match, aren't they? But maybe they're not anymore. The leader's gone, the stripper's gone. They've got eight players on defense, but there is the time bank. The time bank is a factor. The time bank is a big factor. Big factor. How many times should I say it? It's a big factor. <laughs> yeah, huge. 
and you know it's and honestly it's the worst way as well for like to look to, to you know like it hasn't lost yet but the what's it called uh, the time I hate timeouts so much because it like it punishes you specifically because you played well right like you know oh it's so it's so annoying I hate it so much losing because of a timeout but um, in this case actually he didn't stall out the whole half did he he didn't he didn't uh, stall it till turn eight so you know I guess Pilot would have had a chance anyway. Yeah, we're going for fighting the tree. I mean, at least it's quicker to fight the tree. Yeah, Strider tree round three, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. And Tree could get into trouble versus Jay Lev pretty easily, right? Jay Lev, if you prefer. So, um, you know, it's it just it's just a generic bash team, isn't it? All World Alliance, like it's probably All World Alliance and Nobs are probably better against agility teams because then they're just like a generic bash team, like any other, right? Like humans are and stuff. Do you just blitz the tree here? No. I thought he might have blitzed the tree, so if it doesn't stand firm, he clears it. And if he uh, powers it, you know, he gets to move away from it. But huge 4 plus roll right next, well, say right now, next turn. Pybot's got to think fast. At least this was an easy turn for him, right? Just punching things. Oh, God, yeah, he'd be one back the lead. Wow. I mean, this was a really easy turn, right? It was just punch things on the LOS. It's still taking him a minute 20, so I don't think he's really speeding up at all. He's still taking a minute and a half just to make some blocks. So, <laughs> completely unsupported skink in the backfield. Like, it's great if he makes the pickup, it's not if he doesn't. And he's about to go into time bank. Thinking about this reroll. So, no, I wouldn't say he's speeding up. No. Doesn't reroll the pickup. So, it didn't get in time bank, but. You know, the elves have got a gate dodge. Yes, it's a tail, but it is a take. It is a gate dodge, so we could see a flood, a flood of elves, potentially. Okay, huge, huge stand up. I've got to say, I did not like selling out the entire LOS to hit the tree. I also did not like the entirely unsupported backfield or this skink position, right? This skink had to be here. Here? So that this would be a 4 plus dodge to hit him. And then you could 3 plus everyone else through. The lizards being far forward are okay if they can hold it, right? If they can hold the the, them getting through, it's fine. I would have also just rerolled the pickup, right? I would have just definitely rerolled the pickup here because it's just too dangerous. That like the elves are desperate, and then running through to get at you is what they're going to do. See, that's exactly what he does. There was there was no doubt in my mind that that was Strider's play, right? Dodge through, hit that skink, then the others follow you through on a three plus. That was like the play he was going to do. And if this skink had been stood in that square, he would have just done a 4 plus dodge first and punched it. Um, and yeah, now... You know, these are going to come through and... It's pretty bad. You can double rush and base the ball as well. I, I think that was definitely worth a reroll kicking it off. 
I like I th I I don't actually hate this if the skink is there and you reroll the pickup, but to not do either is not good. Yes, yeah, the crocs could have just... He wanted to put the tail on him, didn't he? But yeah, the crocs could have just been, like, here. Well, there you go. I mean, this is still completely salvageable. He just has to do it fast. Gets the full power. problem that he has is okay he's, he's nailed the tree he just has to move things back quickly quickly <laughs> make a cage and not lose I feel like this king maybe should have been like there right Okay, this is good. This is much better from Pyro. This is a lot faster. But, like, he's got to maintain this pace for the whole game now. Like, the whole game. I'm not really sure why that guy's standing there. gets the pickup. See, the thing about failing the pickup is, yes, you, you're going to get another chance next turn. But by not re-rolling it, it means next turn you're 11% to lose the game. <laughs> Pretty much. Which is really, really, really bad. <laughs> um, so, I think he absolutely should re -roll. This is a huge dodge, by the way. Wow. Wow. It was, it was not the best defence of the ball, but he got it done, he didn't go into time bank. Tree stays down, no, it takes root. And stays down. So that is incredible for Pybot. Yes, that, that last dodge was basically 11% to lose the game. Not Not quite that strong, obviously, but close to 11% to lose the game. Yeah. Not really close, actually. It's still quite far from losing the game after that, but it was still a big risk. The, the pickup, the, the first and second pickup fails were like so dodgy. Like, there's still so many dice for Strider to roll that that's why I would have been kind of okay with using a reroll on the pickup, right? Because he's still got a dice, a lot of dice to roll now. But he is going to roll them. And there's only two. Minus two here, isn't it? So minus one, so it's a three plus leap in. And he does get the power. It's, honestly, it's uh, a weakness of Pybot is protecting the ball. Yeah. Has to up, has to up. Oh my god. Okay, well, he can't actually score with this guy, so he's got to somehow get this catcher in. Or I just dodge all the way around with the dancer. Wow. Yeah, honestly, the, the shapes that Pybot has made to protect the ball versus Tree and versus Strider have not really been ideal.
but at least <laughs> at least Strider is not fast enough to score with this guy. Yes, yes, some, yeah, 100%. We don't want unlimited time, that's crazy. I, I like this way. Make it interesting. Yes, yeah, a leap or a jump, yeah, yeah. Okay, now the problem Pybot has is he's got a bit of a tricky turn, but he's got to do it so much faster than he's been doing it. And is he capable of doing it the speed that he has to do it now? Like, it's not really that hard, right? But he just has to do it really fast, like, so much faster. Like, it's making it hard because, he, like, he's only got a minute left, right? He can run out of turn this He can lose the game this turn because he runs out of time, like... I can't understand, like, I can't understand how he can't make this shift, like, he has to make this shift. He has to make this shift. Come on, Pybot. Play fast. Like, every turn now, he can just lose by running out of time. That's how serious this is. This is very serious. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Two dice on the ball. Both down is good enough because he's got to wrestle. Has to re-roll. Gets the full pal. Has to push him down right so he can get the pick up. And it's just, you know, how does he protect it? Time bank. <laughs> Fails another pickup, makes it on the re roll. Fouls the dancer. KOs him. Alright, that's the best way to fa defend against the dancers for Pybot. Just kill them both. <laughs> Just flipping kill them both. My nerves can't take it. Down to seven seconds. <laughs> but like, this is better, right? This has got to be better from a spectating point of view than like just, oh, you've got four minutes every turn and time isn't a factor. This has to be better. I mean, the, the, the wrestler's right here for a... Uh, the problem is, if he's, I guess he's got to, yeah, he's got to catch it to here and then just go straight forward 4 plus 2D and then he's got this catcher that can score so he can still just, you know, get scored on instantly. This is the obvious play for Strider, gets the full pal, puts it here as well, which is perfect. Can he follow? He can. No, oh, it's perfect. One, two, three, four, five, rush, rush. It is super frustrating, yeah. They're just screaming at the screen, but like that's good, isn't it? That's entertainment. That's that's what you want. You would think so, BB Nut. Like I can make the change. And I find it shocking when people can't. Um, oh, here we go. Got to re-roll this. And skulls. And Strider has not lost. Well, almost certainly not lost. Um, yes, hello, N1111. So, the first half, Strider received, scored on turn seven. Then there was a timeout which gave Pybot three turns, and then he scored, and then it was the Lizard's Drive. He sent everyone against the tree, left not a gaping hole, but a chance. Strider took it, 
went through, scored, and now it's looking uh, pretty bad for Piper. All of his rerolls are gone, and uh, Strider's still got one. He might get the draw, he might not. Yep, the, the dancer's back. Yep, he was in a... He, he'd had a golden opportunity. A vicious ref. Sends off a Saurus. <laughs> oh, this was, this was the wrong play, right? He had to block with this one. He can't fight the tree anymore because he's lost a Saurus. So he has to not block with this guy. Too narrow again. Maybe he's okay if he just doesn't move anyone else. Nearly. Yeah, oh god, he's still putting in to fight the tree. <laughs> Blitz from the crocs rolls a one. Yep, shouldn't be fighting the tree, shouldn't be activating the crocs there, shouldn't have just done anything. Like, literally should have just not moved. It was way stronger before he moved anybody. <laughs> Honestly, that turn was better just not moving anybody. This this skin could have moved one square. Um, now he, get, he knocks down the tree, which gives him the blitz. And then that gives him a bit of width. I know the Blitz was already using the Crocs, but it gives him a bit of width. So that was a huge 1D. He's still alive. He's still alive. Who would be the favourite player in this matchup? I mean... Racial wise, Wood Elves are favoured versus Lizard Men. And uh, coaching wise, you know, Strider is favoured versus Pybot as well. So it's tough. He's taking a potato peel at a gunfight. Yeah, so I mean, Lizards are great against other teams, but their one bad matchup is Wood Elves. Um, so he was very unlucky, Pybot, to get two Wood Elves in his same group, right? Very unlucky. There were only, I think, seven Wood Elf teams, and he got two of them. Seven out of 64, and he got two out of three. So... What's the dancer gonna do? Oh yes, yeah, of course, Blitz of Skink. I see you know your Reddit well. <laughs> A succulent skink blitz. And yeah, these this catches cutting these off so he's kind of got a blitz to the catcher I think. Oh, but then they're all they're all cutting them off it's all just terrible isn't it I guess he can chain and stuff well we'll see what he does no reroll 
tell you what, no time bank. Let's first of all do nothing for a minute. <laughs> That's the most important thing. I mean, it's just, it's just every single time. BB Nook, go on Reddit now and make a post saying, how do I beat lizard men? <laughs> and you will get loads of people saying, simply kill all of the skinks. <laughs> Multiple people guaranteed will say, oh, beating lizard men is quite easy. You just simply kill all of their skinks and then they won't be able to pick up the ball. Just simply remove the skinks. <laughs> it really is that easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just every answer. <laughs> ah, you see, you, you may be scared of the strength for Saurus, but these skinks are a big weak link, and you'll find that you can just simply remove them every time you hit them. So, uh, so just blitz the skinks and uh, remove them all instantly. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit like don't roll one for L's, yeah. Yeah. And yes, it does work. It does work. Like when, uh, like when Dragoo took seven cars <laughs> versus, versus Nabolo. He took seven cars. I mean, it wasn't just his skinks, but it was all of his skinks and, and, <laughs> and three Saurus. <laughs> and then he lost that game, funnily enough. <laughs> Five one. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah. This is pretty comfortable for Strider now, isn't he? He's got reroll in pocket. He's got a dancer that he can hold back. I think he'll be feeling very confident right now. Just gonna keep nailing the skink. Kaz, see? Simply, simply remove the skink. <laughs> Quite easy. <laughs> oh. He tried to dodge away from the tail and failed. Okay, so there's half a chance now, isn't there? He can turn the corner around here a little bit. Either way. Either way he can go. Relatively dice roll free, right? Just the blitz and... Uh... No, he'd moved everyone, he wasn't getting two dice on the ball. He was just like going to leave him based in case things happened. Yeah, another Sora's on the tree, yeah. This one can uh, get away though, right, by blocking the uh, dodger. Which he does instantly. Another cars. And that opens up this channel here. Oh, instant one from the Crocs. He's only got three players for a cage. It's turn 14, so he could... He doesn't have to get into scoring range. So he can... You can see what he does. Yes, the last Saurus on the floor should have moved last and tried to dodge, yes.
Yep, that was okay, wasn't it? That's an okay turn. I think Strider's going to blitz a skink again. <laughs> Might even leave him basing the ball, eh? Base the ball is sized up. The problem is if he does, then he can't get back. Like he can get outrun by the skink if he does, can't he? So he might not want to do that. Oh, the dodge through. Yeah, no need for a 1D on the lizard. Wrestles him. So we are going for the 1 in 9 to 2D the ball. Gets him. Gets him. And ball is free. Yep. How many squares has he got left? Oh, double ones! He rolled a double one, finally. And I wonder if that was a mistake. <laughs> Rolling a double one. No, like, you know, dodging with a dancer. Um, I guess not, right? Because if you pick up here, even if you fail the pick up here, you've got the dancer as far back as it can be. Whereas if you like, if you just stay here, which is you know pretty good, like in the way, like you know it's basing him, it's uh, it's basing these two. It's a good square to be in here. But um, and then you could fail this dodge, or succeed this dodge and fail the pickup. The dancer's the best player to get f far back failing the pickup, which is what you feel you're more likely to fail. This is huge now. The, the the skinks can just run away. Unbelievable. Actually unbelievable. Dude, do not. <laughs> do not make an irrelevant block, Pivot. <laughs> what are you playing at? <laughs> What are you playing at, Piper? It looks like he's just going to cage it. Which means the dancer can hit you again. I quite like just running away so that the dancer can reach you. Oh, well. Failed to pick up anyway. In, two, in three tackle zones. Yeah, you, like you have to get the scoring threats in before you make this irrelevant block. Like, it's okay making the block after you, you know, before the pickup, but you have to have moved these two guys first, a million percent. He's out of time bank now, by the way, Pybot, just in case he runs out on turn 16. To be really, to be really exciting. Makes it vaguely interesting. Wow, it's it's super interesting, PC. Super interesting. Hello, uh, Dimmy. Yeah, the clock. I mean, he could just run out of time on the clock, couldn't he? Which would be a disaster. But it's definitely possible. Yes, at minimum, it's a tree tree. I mean, how appropriate for Era BB. It is a tree tree. Is he going to scatter it? No, oh, he has to because the, the, the skink's standing there. It doesn't follow. Oh, it was a blitz. Okay. Oh. Does he just tag the other skink? The skink and the ball, right? No, he just goes for the pickup. Wow. 
Wow, 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 wow. Dub skulls. <laughs> well, he didn't run out of time on turn 16. <laughs> Instant dub skulls. <laughs> Flip me. Flip me. I mean, Strider is a defending, kind of the defending champ. It is a different tournament as he's a tipper. I wonder if they'll, I'll, I'll ask them if they'll just like make it the same tournament or not. Like it is, this is the world championship. The first one wasn't like, the first one was the season two final. So he, I wonder if in future the defending champ will automatically qualify. Because this really was a little bit different. Wasn't it? The game was fed up. Can Strider. Strider can't score here. It's just uh, a pointless waste of time at this point. But, you know, fair enough, right? People, people can do what they want, can't they, with their turn? So there you go, a 2-1 victory for Strider, and thanks to the cleverness of Jay Lev, we know that this isn't the end for Pybot. Technically, there is a chance. And oh my god, that's the wrong thing. This is the table. So you can see that. Pybot has now lost two. And Strider has won two. It is possible that Misspell Tree ends up with one win and two losses. Jay Lev ends up with one win and two losses. Pybot ends up with one win and two losses, and Strider ends up with three wins. So it is technically possible that Pybot is not eliminated, but it's really, 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 really bad for Pybot, and it's really, really, really good for Strider. But again, Strider is not guaranteed of, of qualification because it's possible that um, Pybot loses all three, Jaylee's win two, lo loses one, Strider wins two, loses one, and three wins, two loses, one. So it's not 100% that Strider's qualified. It's not 100% that Pybot is out. But it's looking pretty good for, you know, Strider and pretty bad for Pybot. So there you go. Commiserations, Pybot. Congratulations, Strider. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.